What should the Buffalo Bills do at right tackle? Is Spencer Brown the guy? We're taking a full look at Spencer Brown to be able to answer that question today on Locked on Bills. You are Locked on Bills, your daily Buffalo Bills podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Bills Mafia? It's Joe Marino, author of Go Bills and Buffalo's Run, also the co-host of the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast, and I'm your host of Locked On Bills. I want to thank you for making Locked On Bills your first listen every day, and please be sure to subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, folks, today's episode is all about Spencer Brown. Want to break down his background and his story. Want to break down his film. I spent some time in the film this morning so I could really talk about the skill set and what I think he does well and what I think he needs to work on. And then I want to talk about the future of the right tackle position for the Buffalo Bills. Obviously, a really important conversation today, considering Spencer Brown's one of the five dudes up front blocking for Josh Allen, the Buffalo Bills franchise quarterback. And so they need to have the right direction here at right tackle. And so hopefully by the end of this, we can come to a good understanding of what Spencer Brown is, where he needs to grow, and what the Bills' options are. So let's do it. We'll start with his background. Spencer Brown, third-round pick in 2021, number 93 overall, out of Northern Iowa, which is the FCS level, which is football championship subdivision as opposed to football bowl subdivision, right? So this is the, this isn't your Clemson's and Texas's and Oklahoma's. This is Northern Iowa, right? Small school. Spencer Brown is a native of Lenox, Iowa. He's 25 years old. He turns 26 next February. So this is going to be his age 25 season. Obviously, his third season in the NFL, which Sean McDermott has openly said is the year where you find out what a player is. Spencer Brown grew up on a cattle farm in Iowa, and in high school, he lettered in baseball, basketball, football, golf, and track. As far as football goes, he played tight end, and he played defensive line in high school. As a tight end for his career, he caught 64 passes for 1,024 yards and 18 receiving touchdowns. His final season, his last season in high school on defense, he had 17 sacks and was actually an all-state selection. He's a good basketball player. He averaged 20.4 points per game and 18.1 rebounds per game. And then in baseball, as a pitcher, he had a 2-4-8 ERA, so very accomplished football, baseball, and basketball player. Now, as far as his recruitment coming out of high school, he didn't have a lot of options. He was a no-star recruit, and Northern Iowa was one of only a few opportunities that he had. He had preferred walk-on opportunities from Power 5 schools like Iowa State, but he was set on Northern Iowa. And he came to Northern Iowa as a 225-pound tight end. And his first year at Northern Iowa, he redshirted in 2016. And then he made the transition to offensive tackle in 2017 from tight end. And that first year, his redshirt freshman season in 2017, he started five games at right tackle, but then suffered a season-ending knee injury which was a torn MCL in his right knee. Came back, started every game in 2018, every game in 2019, and then 2020 was supposed to be his last season, and it was, but unfortunately he didn't play any football because the season was canceled due to COVID. Now, we did go to the Senior Bowl and uh, had a really good pre-draft process, so fared well at the Senior Bowl, and then the way that he measured in terms of size and the way that he tested athletically was pretty significant. 
As far as his verified measurements, 6082, so 68 and a quarter, which is the 97th percentile for height among offensive tackles. 311 pounds, which is the 42nd percentile. 34 and three quarter inch arms, which is the 74th percentile. And 10 and three eighth inch hands, which is the 75th percentile. So you're talking about great size, tall, long. It's kind of what you're looking for in an offensive tackle. His athletic testing, phenomenal. Ran a 494 40 yard dash. That's the 95th percentile. 31 and a half inch vertical jump. That's the 86th percentile. 117 inch broad jump, which is 97th percentile. 696 three cone, which is the 99th percentile. 44 short shuttle, which is the 98th percentile. And 29 bench press reps, which is the 82nd percentile. I mean, just phenomenal athletic testing. 95th percentile or higher in the 40 yard dash, vertical jump, broad jump, three cone drill, and the short shuttle. His RAS score, perfect 10. Great size, great athleticism. As we know, he gets drafted by the Bills in the third round. As a rookie, he starts 10 games. So I think week four was that Houston game. That was his free first start and uh, went on to start 10 games as a rookie. And then in between his rookie season and last year, he spent that offseason rehabbing a back injury and so obviously missed a really critical opportunity coming out of his rookie season into his second season to get himself in position to play. He did, however, start 14 games last year in 2022. And um, we'll talk about how he fared in just a moment. But so far through two seasons, 24 regular season starts in the NFL. He has missed a combined five games over the last two seasons due to injuries. And then, of course, had the back surgery coming out of 2021 to go with the surgery in 2017 to repair his right MCL. And then he also had a surgery in high school in 2015 in his left knee to repair a defect under his kneecap. So he's had surgery in both knees and a back surgery since 2015. So in a nutshell here, we got a Midwest kid, grew up on a farm, played all the sports in high school, goes to Northern Iowa, converts from tight end to offensive line, Starts there for two and a half seasons. His last year is canceled due to COVID. Goes to the Senior Bowl. Is an elite physical talent in terms of size and athleticism. Injury concerns are present. Winds up being a third-round pick, a primary starter for the Buffalo Bills at right tackle in his first two seasons, a you know, top five offense both years. Uh, his first season at um, in the NFL, he – obviously had a big jump in competition, right? He didn't play college. He didn't play college football in 2020 and goes right into the NFL and has a huge jump from the FCS level to the national football league. And then a second season, he spent the off season leading up to it, rehabbing a back injury that took him right up until week one to really get back from. And bottom line is this, he's entering a critical season. So with the background out of the way, we're going to focus next on the film. I, I studied the film this morning, so I want to talk about what it what it showed me, and then we'll kind of talk about the future and bring it all together here in our final segment. But before we get there, I need to tell you about FanDuel. The NBA playoffs, they are almost here, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back. If your first bet doesn't win, just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scorers and threes drained. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right, so I want to talk about the film here. And I spent this morning watching Spencer Brown's film, and I watched three games. The three games that I watched were the second Miami game, which I believe was week 16, 
And then I watched the second Patriots game in week 18. And then I watched the Dolphins wild card game. The reason I picked those games is because an NFL scout once told me, if you really want to evaluate the growth of a player or the growth of teams, you really want to focus on the second divisional game that year. Because not only are you extremely familiar with them, they're very familiar with you, but you've also played basically the same schedule. And so you're watching the same tape and you're seeing how other teams have really attacked strengths and weaknesses of your opponent. And so you just, you're really dialed in on the opponent. And so that's why I picked those games. I would have picked the second Jets game, but Spencer Brown didn't play in the second Jets game. So that's the exposures that I'm going off of here. So I want to talk about what I'd liked and then where I think there are some growth areas for Spencer Brown based on the film. Here's what I liked. Well, we talked about him being a smooth athlete, and that shows up on tape. He's got springy feet. He's got good range. He's got good redirectability, got good lateral mobility, can climb to the second level. There's a lot to like about the athleticism that he has and how it shows up functionally on film. That's a good thing. And some other ways that his athleticism shows up is you see his ability to cut off speed around his outside hip. So pass rushers want to win around your near hip. And he has that ability to set up those roadblocks and really cut off that speed. So you see the, the foot quickness. I like his ability to run block out of the spread formations that the Bills like to run out of, a lot of shotgun runs. And I think Spencer Brown does very well to take care of the first level, work scoop and combo blocks, get to the second level, kind of spring, pivot, hinge. He's got a lot of range in the run game that, that I really like from watching his tape. Very springy when working to the second level. He shows good set variants. So with your pass sets, I like the way that he shows a lot of variety. And it's not just vertical sets, 45-degree set, jump set, which is your most common pass sets. It's that he's got different technique for all of them. And not everything looks the same all the time. And he's not robotic. And that's important. Obviously, opponents are going to cue in on your tendencies. And I think that Spencer does a good job showing opponents a lot of different looks with how he gets into his sets. Same thing about his strikes. His punches, there's a lot of variance there, which is really critical because if you punch the same way all the time, it's going to make it very easy for rushers to know your tendencies and then clear your punch and they can get around you. So I think he shows good variety there. But overall, there's just a good foundation. He's got athleticism. He's got size. It's functional in a lot of ways on the field. There's some good technical variance that I'd like. So there's just a good foundation for him to work with moving forward. Now, there's some things that I didn't like, and there's some some very clear growth areas to me when studying Spencer Brown's film. The number one issue that I saw, particularly in pass protection, was not consistently sitting on his hips and playing with leverage in pass pro. What I mean is it's that ability to get square to the rusher at the top of his set, leverage the hips and sit on them, stay square to the opponent, and protect your edges. Pass rushers, good NFL pass rushers, the most important thing that they can do is win around the near hip of an offensive tackle, so the outside hip of an offensive tackle. And what Spencer has to do a better job of is when he gets to the top of his set and when that pass rusher is kind of getting to that point where he has to turn, he has to do a better job of playing with leverage and not getting top heavy. What happens is everything looks really good with Spencer Brown. And then when the rusher gets to the top of the arc, which is that outside track right around the offensive tackle, Spencer's edges can be soft. Why is that? Well, he plays tall. He's not consistently square to the opponent, and he finds himself in recovery mode and in chase mode too often. Now, part of that is the need to develop his core strength better 
to be able to absorb power. But it's also important for him to not rob himself of functional strength by playing tall. I mean, he's six foot eight. He has to play with more consistent leverage. He's also got a bit of a narrow build. So he's 6'8", 311, which is a huge human being. But in terms of NFL offensive tackles, there's a narrowness about that. He's not a very wide body guy. And so he, there's just not a lot of density to his build. He's tall and angular. And that body composition can make things challenging for him and put the onus back on technique. And by technique, I mean set points, leveraged hips, maximizing his length to keep rushers more at the edge of his reach. Those are all critical factors in more consistency and pass protection for Spencer Brown. I hope that makes sense to you. Just think about that for a second, where you have to be able to absorb somebody coming at you, right? That is in the NFL. They can convert speed to power. And their entire objective is to get to your edges so they can get around you and pressure the quarterback. Spencer has to develop better set points, better hip leverage, and more consistency overall with staying in front of that rusher more power in his punt in his post hand so that way that he can keep rushers at bay. It's just kind of firming up those edges. And all of that plays into it. Now, in the run game, I want to see Spencer sustain blocks for longer. And a lot of the growth areas that I talked about in pass protect protection contribute to some of his run game inconsistency. I see I see leverage issues in the run game, that narrow frame and a modest amount of core strength, and I think that challenges his ability to stay square and say stay on top of blocks. Also, hand fits. Spencer does a good job from time to time of getting his hands fit and placed initially, but that battle for hand placement continues throughout the entire rep, where you, as an offensive lineman, you're looking to get your hands fit and be able to control rushers, right, or de defenders. And as a defender, your objective is to get that offensive lineman's hand off of you and get your hands fit on them so that you can control the rep. It's all hand combating skills. You know what wins in, trend, in the trenches in the NFL? Low pads and violent hands. And I think for Spencer, being able to work those hand fits more consistently throughout the rep will allow him to latch on and stay on blocks for longer. Really, you know, it's grip strength. It's showing that ability to sustain those blocks for longer. So there's some things to work on here. There's a good foundation. There's no question about it. A lot to like, but how he deploys his physical traits and how he maneuvers around some of the challenges that his own frame presents is going to be really important for Spencer Brown to play his best football in year three. And, and if he gets the opportunity convince the Bills that he is the guy. He's the guy for them long-term at right tackle. And that's part of what we're going to talk about here in the next segment. We're really going to focus in on the future of the position and some of those dynamics that are all-encompassing, whether it's sticking with Spencer Brown or perhaps looking at some of the other options. So we're going to take a quick break and dive into the future of right tackle for the Buffalo Bills. All right, so let's kind of bring this all to a head. The first thing that I want to acknowledge here in studying Spencer Brown and really this offense in general is that I think it's pretty clear that the most upgradable position on the offense is right tackle. And it's an important one, right? It's an important position for the Bills. And I've said this, this isn't the first time I've said this, but Spencer Brown's development is essential to the offense, arguably the most important thing. Him really taking that next step is critical. I think that would be so big for this offense. And as I've been through it, there's plenty of reasons to buy in. There are plenty of reasons to be concerned. In that the concerns can be the technique, the concerns can be the injuries, right? To two knee surgeries and a back surgery, 
since 2015. Something to be mindful of. The name that I can't get out of my mind when I think about Spencer Brown and the course that he's on is Dawson Knox. I think there's a lot of parallels in their stories. Dawson Knox embraced a position switch in college just like Spencer Brown did. Dawson Knox was a high school quarterback that switched to tight end in college. Spencer Brown, a high school tight end slash defensive lineman that switched to offensive line in college. And then they both had weird college careers. Two and a half seasons as a starter at the FCS level for Spencer Brown. Meanwhile, Dawson Knox didn't catch a touchdown pass at Ole Miss and had 39 career catches. Both of these guys, Brown and Knox, became rookie NFL starters despite some circumstances, right? Despite not having a whole lot of time on task at the position that they're asked to play in the NFL as rookies. Both battled injuries their first two seasons. That was true for Dawson Knox and Spencer Brown. And both entered their third season with plenty of doubt and a lot of push and desire from fans to replace them. I remember the Dawson Knox year two to year three offseason quite well when there was everyone pounding the table to give John U. Smith a bunch of money or trade for Zach Ertz. And now you're seeing a lot of hope that the Bills will draft a right tackle in the first round to replace Spencer Brown. I feel like this team is committed to Spencer Brown from the way that Brandon Bean talks about him to the way Sean McDermott talks about him. There's a lot of reasons to believe that they are in on Spencer Brown. Now, listen, I fully understand the argument that Spencer Brown, right, and what he's shown to this point shouldn't prevent you from further investments at right tackle, including, right, an upgrade opportunity. And the Bills, for as glowing as they are about Spencer Brown, right, and, and a lot of belief there and in, in talking about a lot of the stuff we, we've we already did, done, talked about, about this the, the offseason and not being able to really focus on getting better because he's rehabbing a back injury going into year two, and so we didn't see the growth that we needed. For as much as they've really talked about that and made sure everyone was aware of it, they're clearly doing their due diligence on offensive tackles. Aaron Cromer, the Bills offensive line coach, he was at the Northwestern Pro Day, and they've got a big-time offensive line prospect in Peter Skaronsky. He was at the Syracuse Pro Day, who they have Matthew Bergeron. And that's just that we know of. Bill's assistant offensive line coach, Austin Gunn, he was at Tennessee. They've got Darnell Wright. Darnell Wright is going to be one of the 30 visits for the Bills. And so they're they're doing work on tackles. And, and look, they do work on every position group. And position coaches go to Pro Days all over the country every year. But I think you can see that he's at these guys are at some pretty high profile pro days. I think this is the bottom line. I understand the bottom line is that I understand whatever direction the Bills take. I really do. If you want to continue rolling with Spencer Brown as your guy at right tackle, I get it. There's a lot to like about the player and the ways he can improve. And there's a lot of reasons why he's had inconsistency. And the Bills need to hit on a player like this, right? The Bills need a third-round impact starter. And right now, there's a chance Spencer Brown can be that. And you love that he's got some experience under his belt and has the same offensive line coach, right, year over year. Cromer from two years, you know, two years in a row as opposed to Bobby Johnson and then two Aaron Cromer. So you like that he'll have year over year time with the same offensive line coach. Obviously, he's extremely gifted physically, has done some good things on tape. But I also understand if the Bills wanted to pick a guy at 27. Offensive tackle is a premium position. It's it's important. We're talking about protection for Josh Allen. You're talking about jump-starting your run game. And there's going to be some value there at offensive tackle. And that's what makes this really interesting to me. Because when you have those options at a premium position like that, it's good, right? You you want to use your 
premium draft picks on premium positions if you can, if it makes sense. And we've already established that this is an upgradable spot for the Buffalo Bills. It's the number one most logical upgradable spot for the Bills offensively. And so I, I, I get it. I really do get both directions here. I really do. On tomorrow's podcast, my intent is to discuss some of those draft options with you, just like we did with the linebackers last week. I want to do this with the offensive tackles. And so you're going to see that there's going to be some names available that could make a lot of sense. And so we'll break those all down tomorrow on the podcast. So make sure that you come on back. Take a moment to be sure that you're subscribed. Would love it if you took a moment to rate, review, and share the podcast. Have a great rest of your day. Go Bills. And I look forward to catching up with you again tomorrow.